Um, okay. So uh, those were some announcements. As I noted, we'll be leaning pretty heavily on AnyLogic. So I'm going to start up um, my AnyLogic here and uh, I'd invite other people to do the same. So those who are remote, um, uh, I noticed there's uh, a couple people remote um, and uh, that's that's great. Make sure you call up your any logic as well. Okay. Okay, so. And I'll share my screen so you can see this. For some reason, my video is, is uh, not operational right now. Um, that's fine. And okay, so um, I'd ask you to watch uh, a video um, for this time. Um, and I realized that video was um, a little bit uh, it's for material for next week rather than material we're going to be relying on today. If you did watch it, that's great. Um, it'll be very useful for next week. And potentially some things in that video will, um, will be informed by, by some of today's discussion. It may help provide uh, additional perspectives on some of the things we're going to be doing. But I realized, you know, in terms of coverage material, um, there's a few points that are absolutely central points for understanding this first module of this class, um, first of the, the three big modules on each modeling method. And um, I, I feel remiss without um, a really solid attempt to cover that material. Um, so today, we're going to be building up some foundational understanding that's critical to understand stock and flow modeling. Now, just a few days ago, on Tuesday, I spoke with you about some of the diversity of different diagrams used in, in system dynamics modeling. And I mentioned three diagrams, although most of Tuesday's discussion was with respect to a particular type of diagram. What was that? So, sorry? With feedback loops, yes. Causal loop diagramming. There were two other sorts of diagrams that I mentioned as playing a central role in system dynamics. And what were they? Well, one was called stocks and flows, and the other was called uh, was called system structure diagram. Okay, um, and uh, each of these plays a role. And I noted last time that often there's this successive elaboration within system dynamics, diagrammatic elaboration from causal diagrams, which are used early in the process, often with stakeholders, often eliciting understanding about a system at a, what I would call semi-qualitative or semi-quantitative method. Not, not purely qualitative, not purely narrative, not purely discussion, because we have polarities associated with errors and it was going certain directions and it brings some degree of quantitative understanding, although it falls short of being able to be simulated. It's not unambiguous enough to be simulated, but it's it's um, you know quantitative enough to allow us to reason about dynamics associated with feedback loops. And we we talked about the archetypical dynamics for feedback loops last time. Remember this? Yeah. Um, and and that's good. Um, and and that can get you very far in terms of reasoning about possible behaviors of a system which has many feedback loops, often competing feedback loops, where certain loops vie for dominance with others. So, 
that when we get to quantitative modeling, as we're doing today, and then will, will be the big emphasis in this module, these feedback loops remain of central interest. And they will be driving a lot of the behaviors that we'll be seeing. And it turns out that we can reason about the behaviors that will be seen quantitatively with a simulation model in terms of these feedback loops, in terms of which of them are dominating right now. They compete with one another. A regulatory loop, such as this negative feedback loop, competes with neighboring in unstable reinforcing feedback loops, for example. Often some of those dominate early on and then the regulatory loop starts to dominate and it starts to control them, et cetera. And there's, a, there's over time a kind of shifting balance, for example, as a, as a outbreak progresses, uh, the video loops and these types of outbreaks, and as outbreaks progress, there's often a shifting dominance between whether it's new infections, breeding new infections that dominate, or whether it's the depletion of susceptibles. The fact that we've got too little fuel to keep the fire going at, at, um, at a high level that's dominating, or whether it's recovered. So the causal of diagrams are hardly something we only do at the beginning of the, of, of the model. And it turns out there's tools you can build up that will sort of trace as a quantitative model runs, which feedback loops are dominant right now, and which ones are ramping up, uh, et cetera. But as we go and elaborate these diagrams, we add more structure to our understanding. We add more crispness, more rigor, more to, we make more distinctions, more fine grained distinctions. And when we go from a causal loop diagram, where we're focused on these feedback structure of this system, to a system structure diagram, what additional feature are we building in? Can anyone say here? Yes. Uh, so Patrick. Can if, you introduce some um, Mm -hmm. So important in stocks and flows. Stocks and flows is right. We introduced stock and flows. And last and yesterday, Tuesday, two a.m. or something. Um, so I'm still stuck on yesterday. Um, uh, I, I described to you how introduction of stocks and flows helps sharpen our reasoning. Distinguishing which variables are stocks and which are flows allows us to reason which variables carry inertia, which carry the state of the system, which carry kind of the the, the momentum of the system, its current situation. Often that inertia, the use of that term reflects the fact that it takes a while to shift to be able to drain the bathtub, as it were, to empty the hospital ward. Etc. Once it's full, you know, it takes a while to, to change it in a really uh, big way. We can we can drain it down, but it takes time. But there's more than that. There's a certain type of reasoning that is absolutely central central to the kind of the philosophy of modeling stocks and flows. But more than that, it's central to understanding that you develop with stocks and flows. Central to the insights that you had that I didn't, in fact, I felt that I neglected it in our last discussion. And that sort of reasoning is based on stocks and how the behavior of those stocks, how the, the value of the stocks, the amount of stuff in the stock accumulates or drains based on the value of the flows. Now, this is not totally new to you. Indeed, uh, when I asked you to watch a video some time ago with respect to stocks and flows, 
um, there were some slides which talked about it, which talked about how stocks and the behavior of a stocks, whether it's rising or falling, depends on its flows. And does anyone remember here? Can anyone speak to how does whether a stock is rising, say the number of infections people, whether it's rising or falling, depend on the flows of it, given the flows out of that? Can anyone say? How does it depend? Yes, uh, name? Akas. Uh, Akas. Akas. Yes. So, like, if uh, the output is more than the more than the increase, and get the greater than the output, then it will increase. That's right. Yeah. If you have stuff coming in faster than it's leaving, then increase stuff. If you have stuff leaving faster than it's coming in, it's going to do yeah, right. You have a sink, and if the water's coming in faster than it's draining. Maybe it's coming in at two liters a minute and it's draining at one liter a minute. That sink's going to back up, right? Mm -hmm. If it's draining faster than it's coming in, if it's draining at two liters per minute and it's coming in at one liter per minute, that stock's going to drain, right? It's going to go down over time. Commonsensical. What what happens if the rate of inflow is the same as the rate of outflow? <laughs> yeah, it maintains the same level. It's invariant. It doesn't change. It is a constant value. You can use different terms for it, but it's in balance, right? Um, and it makes sense, right? Uh, if the water's coming in at exactly the same rate as it's draining to your sink. Um, there's some turnover of water, but the sink level is going to stay the same, right? If we had five people walking in here per minute via that door and five people leaving per minute from that door, the number of people in the room, the net number of people in the room, the number of people in the room, I should say, is going to be, it's going to stay the same, right? Um, we're going to have different people in the room. It's going to be important. Right? Talk about differences from from agent based model and individual level traditions like agent based and discrete kind. So you mean different people in the room, <laughs> but the number of people in the room is going to be constant, right? And that's what we're really keeping to track of in these stocks, right? Okay, so so. It turns out that that may seem very modest, this principle. It may seem obvious at a certain level. But it turns out it opens up a huge amount of potential for insight. When you interpret data output from a model, Data observed from the world that's about stocks by number of people in Royal University Hospital with COVID, or um, the current number of people with active COVID infections. Um, uh, in light of processes that increase it and processes that decrease it, yeah, I know this is seen. Obvious at a certain level, but if you can keep this lens in mind and apply it consistently, you will do very good. Not only the exam, but in terms of understanding phenomena in the world. Okay. Um, now, we're going to illustrate this today, and I, I really want to drive this home. Because it's going to be key, and it's going to be key not only for the system dynamics module of this class, it's going to be key for understanding the MSQ module, particularly an agent based module. Agent based modeling, we are not merely keeping track of a count of people, we're actually tracking individuals. 
right? The English model we're tracking individual people. But we can, when we, even though we count the population of individuals, we can always aggregate up and engage in counting. Count the number of people with a certain characteristic and then reason about how that count is affected by what are conceptually flows into and flows out of that stock. For example, the number of people who are um, getting infected, the number of people recovering. Those may be captured with individual level transitions, state charts, and none of that is, stands in the way of aggregating up to a level of number of people, you know, summarizing our model, our current model state is number of people with certain characteristics, number of people developing, going into that state, number of people leaving it. Turns out it'll be super, super useful to do that. Stock and flow lens, keeping this lens in mind. So this, this principle, maybe one of the most useful, practically useful principles around. And it is shocking how little it is, it is applied in practice by people without sort of formal exposure to this modeling. Um, if you can apply it, you'll do very well in your research. So I'd like to enact I'd like to put it in place. I'd like to, to, to build up a model which, which shows this and which gets us going. And in the process, I'm going to remind us on stock on uh, first order delays. And I'm actually going to introduce, as time allows, um, a little bit about second order delays and uh, set you up for starting to reason about what are called aging chains. Okay. So um, let's let's go do a bit of modeling. Okay. So if you have your uh, any logic here, uh, please please follow along. I do this for your sake, and we will. We will try to get in place the um, uh, the, the mobile app here. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to close out any models that we have right now. We're going to create a new model, and this model is going to be uh, called uh, so uh, uh, demographic. So so I'll say uh, stock and flow. Demographics V1, and its model time unit is going to be years. Okay. So, what does that mean, time unit again? Here. Yes, Patrick. Yeah. yeah. What one means when it comes to, to, to time? It's not. That it only simulates things once a year. No, 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 no. It it it's not that it only increments at one year at a time. It's that that's our kind of meter stick for measuring time. One means one year. A rate will mean and I has a rate will mean a probably per year. Uh, by the way. Okay. This is this is important. It's not that we're we're leaping forward one year at a time. No, there is a mode of modeling we we'll get to. We do with cellular phenomena, which engages that when we step forward by a fixed time step for the other. But that's the moment we use continuous time extraction in system dynamics. Okay. And continuous state phenomena. Okay. So I've just created a model. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do is go and we are going to add in here from the palette in the system dynamics area, uh, a stock, which is going to be called, and uh, we're going to capitalize it to indicate that it's a stock. It's kind of a nice convention to be careful about how you, how you uh, capitalize things and, and use that <clears throat> to kind of distinguish things. Pardon me, I'm just uh, trying to size it. I was trying to size it to be one one um, fit uh, one level up and down, but I'm not gonna 
worry about it. So this is me a stock of children, okay? Um, and we're going to create a flow into this that is called births, okay? And we're going to make this verse initially just be a thousand people. So I'd say verse equals a thousand. What does that mean? Sorry? Per year, it's a thousand. This is really important. By the way, the people sometimes say the rate of births, okay? Um, rate meaning it's something per unit time. And it's per unit, is, is how to interpret it, per unit time, okay? It's people per unit time in this case. And we're going to make the stock, what do we have to specify for a stock? Its dynamics are, are are driven by what? What stocks dynamics are driven by flows, but there is one thing we have to specify. And what is that? The initial value. The initial value would be empty. It's gonna start empty. Okay, so you're gonna tell me what happens if we have a thousand births per year and the stock is starting. What if we go and we graph it out, what are we gonna see? Fill up, linearly. Fill up linearly. I love it. I love it. It's exactly right. So let's let's just test our intuition and test our model and make sure they're aligned, right? Sharpen our understanding, make sure the model's working well. Um, we're gonna go click here, and this is what we're gonna see, right? Year on year on year, it's just going up. It's derivative is what? The derivative is constant. And what is its derivative? Um, a thousand. Its derivative is a thousand. Its rate of change is a thousand. It is rising by a thousand people per year. All those statements are yeah. equivalent. For a bit of asks. What is its rate of increase per unit time? The value of the stock. How quickly is it going on per unit time? And the answer, as Patrick said, is a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That should not be surprising at all, right? Good. Okay. Now, let's. Let's start elaborating. Okay, now, I'm going to ask you because of that pop quiz zero. So, the stress is resulting. I, I just want to ask it a second. I don't think I'll simulate it unless this got some points in that line. But reverse, what if we, instead of maybe getting a thousand, what if we made it a thousand only up to year 10? And after that, it was zero. What would the stock do? What, what would the value of the stock look like? So, so for the first 10 years, it's a thousand people per year coming in. After that, it's zero coming in. What what will happen? What, the number of people in the stock, what will do? Dawson. Bingo. Bingo. It'll go up and then it'll plateau, right? Mm -hmm. We can put it in place, um, uh, and it, it wouldn't be hard, but time is limited. But essentially, it's going to rise up. And I apologize for those online. The video, for some reason, is uh, uh, most flaky this morning. Um, but basically, it's going to rise up uh, at 1,000 a year to year 10, right? So T equals 10, right? Because remember, Time, time unit means, what does one mean? It means one year, 10 means 10 years, right? 
It's going to rise up this value here to which it rise up. So at year 10, it's going to have reached what? 10,000 people, right? And that's off because it's rising up at 1,000 per year. That's what derivative of 1,000 means. It's rising at 1,000 per year, right? Told you I was going to be trying to emphasize these concepts, which we've seen in other classes, but at least I need some basic familiarity. And after that, it's going to be rising by how fast? Zero. Zero. Yeah. I'm saying if we put in a formula that said, make it a thousand for time less than any to 10, and, and then zero after that it would rise up and stay the same, right? Why isn't it changing after after year 10? There's no inflow and there's no outflow. Yeah, nothing to change it. No inflow, no outflow. Net rate of change is zero. Or I could say it is uh, equal. Outflow and inflow are equal. They're both what? Equal to? Zero after year ten, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. So that's what it would look like, right? Okay. But now I'm going to. Uh. And, and by the way, during this time, it's it's rising because what is greater than what? Kind of in a trivial way. Inflow is greater than outflow because outflow is zero. Inflows greater than zero for this content. This is what I was drawing. There was, of course, the kind of factual stuff they got to ask you to do or to, to put into place. If I better just uh, imagine me this case where after year 10, it's it's zero rate of inflow. Okay, so now let's go drag in another stock, or in a kind of nice thing, you could just copy this stock copy it and paste it if you saw it so fit. And I'm going to say, um, uh, we're gonna say middle-aged, um, uh, middle-aged, mm -hmm. um, say working age if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. It's gonna start also at zero. Um, and I'm going to put a flow from children to middle aged. Okay. And this is going to be called uh, maturation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Um, right. Um, or maybe I'll call it becoming adult or something like that because maturation will occur later um, becoming a senior as well. Okay, it's called, called becoming an, an adult, okay? Um, and there's a, okay, thanks Wade for posting that. Becoming an adult. Now, if for the formula for becoming an adult, I had to switch pronunciation as I crossed the border for that. Uh, if I said a thousand, what would we see? What would happen if I say a thousand? So what is burst? What's the value of burst? Thousand. What's the value of, of, of becoming at all? A thousand. So what's gonna happen? Or what do you think could happen? Yes, uh Tyler. Yeah, basically the brain of um, children. Right there, so the same, but then basically the linear line solves. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, children, is there going to be changing? No, why? Why, why do we know it's not going to change? If the, if the inflow equals out, is middle age going to be changing? Yes. And how is it going to be changing? Inflow is greater than outflow, and specifically inflow is a thousand, outflow is zero. zero. So it, what will it be doing over time? <laughs> yeah, it'll be going up, right? Yeah. Um, good. Let's let's run this, shall we? Not.
Okay. Um, that's awesome. Uh, and children, by the way, will remain the same. And what's the same? What value? What is the same? What value is it? Zero. Yeah. Um, all right. If children are just a pass through, we have, we have water going on, we have children going out, as soon as, soon as you know, we have uh, a thousand going out, a thousand going in. It's it's as if people are coming into the room and leaving at the same rate, right? Um, right? Okay. Um, that's kind of kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, but uh, so so it is. Um, we have inflow equal outflow, so this stays the same, right? And uh, middle aged is accumulating, right? Hmm. But this construct of like a thousand people leaving per year is a little bit artificial. Kids don't instantly become adults. They can't instantly become adults, right? Okay. Um, so generally, we will use a first order delay formulation to capture some well. In, in, in that stock to capture a, a period of time in that stock. Some mean amount of time keep people remain counted as kids before they become adults. Now, what's a first order delay? We saw that in this class some weeks ago, right? I want to make sure we hit it really hard because it's going to be one of those building blocks, those higher level building blocks. Not just the stock, not just the flow, but a flow and a stock, or excuse me, it's stock and a flow, and often, often there's more than one flow, arranged in a very particular way, specifically with respect to the outflow. In, an, in a first order delay, what is it characterized? An outflow that, how does the outflow relate to the stock? Yes, Tom. Uh, excellent, 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 excellent. The outflow is delayed from the input, and we're going to see that in a big way in just a moment. Hmm? But how is is there is the outflow in first order delay just a fixed value, like in Tom? No. What is it? What's the form of that? Yes. Exactly. Um, so it's associated with a certain rate. And particularly that rate depends linearly on the value of the stock. Now, we can actually phrase it. Turns out that there's different ways of phrasing a first order delay. There's different kind of words you can use to describe different formulas that all mathematically are interchangeable, but they give a different lens and different kind of interpretation, different way of frame framing it that are all mathematically identical, um, but which are really useful when thinking about it in different ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a different way than we've seen thus far. So Rachel mentioned a rate, but we're going to put in a mean time that they remain there. Okay, so we're going to say, um, uh, uh, we'll say length. Uh, so so duration of childhood, and we're going to say eighteen years. Okay, can I just say eighteen? Yes, because 18, it's it's a unit whose dimension is time. And therefore, that number 18 means 18 what? Good, yes, that's right. Okay, good. And we're going to take this duration of childhood, and we're going to connect it here to becoming adults. 
And what else is this going to depend on? This flow here, this here flow, what else is it going to depend on? The value of the stock. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Who's, who's not? Good. Um, this one's got it. Okay. So the value of the stock. And how does it depend on the value of the stock? Okay, this is the time. The duration of thousand is at time. It's some amount of time. So I, I want you to reflect before you answer the what the formula is. I want you to reflect what the unit or the dimension of children and middle age. Um, what does the thousand mean there? It is, or suppose it were the, the value of those stocks were you know, 20,000, what would it be? 20,000 of what? Yeah, it, well, it's, it's 20,000 people, it's people, people. It's not $20,000, it's not 20,000 years, right? It's not 20,000 miles under the sea, right? It's not 20,000 doses of vaccine, right? No, 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 20,000 people, people. Mm -hmm. So, so the dimension of these stocks or people, what is the dimension of the flow? What is the, what are they? Are they, so if I give a thousand, you said it earlier, there's people per year, right? Okay, that's right. The flows are in people per year and they flow into stocks, which are in people here. That's good. The stocks are the integral of the flows. They sum up the flows over little bits of time times the value of the flow. They they go sum it up. So it's value of flow times some amount of time, and they're summing those up. That's when those are so compatible. Um, if you have a stink and it's booked it as a volume of a capacity of measure than liters, and you have liters per minute coming into it. Of water, yeah, that makes sense, right? The rate, the rate, the value of a stock has a certain dimension, and the flows into and out of that stock have to be that same dimension divided by what? Time. Time. Okay, so. The dimension of this flow is what then? Is we to be like you just said, the people per year. Yeah. And whatever the dimension is that the stock divided by time. Don't freak me out again on the bottom of the Don't freak me out on the bottom of the But say, like, the dimension is big. <laughs> like that. So, okay. So, um, so the dimension of this of this uh, this this year flow becoming adult is people per year, right? People per unit time. So, give me a formula that has that dimension for for. Give me a formula. It's gonna be of that dimension. What's the formula? Speak on, Patrick. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. Children divided by duration of childhood. Remember, autocomplete is your friend. I might add it's mine as well. It's a bit of a mostly valuable friend. Uh, okay, so. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the formula for becoming an adult, why does it say it should become an adult? I don't know why it says it should. It should be becoming an adult, not, not becoming adult. And sorry, it should, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the should came from. Okay, children divided by duration of childhood. Mm -hmm. hmm? Why couldn't it be children times duration of childhood? The dimensions don't matter. Yeah. It's a dimensional mismatch. If it were 
for children times the return of capital, that would be of dimension one. That formula would imply it's of dimension one. People even. People even. There are times we accumulate people even. Like the, the life years lived by the population. We'll eventually get to that. Um, but that's not what we want here. <laughs> you know, the dimension of the flow has to be the dimension of the stock in which it flows or out of which it flows divided by time. And this is a fifth recommend. Please, 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 pretty please. On the final exam, do not tell me it's this times the rate of the trouble. Okay? Please remember back to this lesson. Just a few moments. Okay. 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 Now let, let's talk about the intuition. Patrick noted this. Imagine that the duration of childhood were two years. Okay, just just imagine. Maybe it is for I don't know a certain type of, of, of maybe maybe for a certain type of deal, a certain type of deal, right? Um, imagine for two years about how much of the of the children would be leaving per year. You'd expect it. if it's two years, then every year about how many of them would leave? Half, right? So it would be the flow out would be children divided by two, right? Right? Half of them will be leaving per year, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So if there are a thousand, uh, if there were 10,000 kids in the stock, 10,000 kid beard. Right, maybe that goes 10,000 kids, right? Um, then nothing more than that. Um, if, if there were goats, right? Um, then half of them leave per year would be number of kids divided by two, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if the duration of childhood were five years, about what fraction of them would leave every year? Yeah, one to two or one over five, right? Mm -hmm. One fifth of them would three. Yeah. And, and so, what this is saying is that one over the region of childhood amount of fraction of them leave for you. Makes sense, right? So, so, from a dimensional standpoint, this makes sense. And from a sense, just sort of being sensible, it makes, it makes sense, right? It's sensible, right? It, it makes, it, it, it jives with what you're interested in, suggest, right? You think about it. It would not jive if you make it times as a large fraction of the class did to me on the final exam last year. And they weren't kind of good. These are not um, okay. Um, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have this basic reasoning. This is one of the phases of the first third of life. It's a first third of life because the outflow depends linearly. It's just proportional to the value of the stock. It's just the stock divided by a constant. Mm -hmm. You get that? <laughs> now, it turns out that's mathematically identical to the more familiar one that was mentioned earlier by Rachel, where it's a rate. You could phrase this alternatively as the value of the stock times the rate, and what would that rate be? It would, what would the value of that rate be? If we phrase this instead of children times some rate, what is that rate? Yes, the title. It's one over the duration. It's one over the duration, right? Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dividing, uh, you know, if you have a value, Right? You have the value to be fair to the side of time, right? If, if you have x divided by tau, you could equally much write that as x times what? 1 divided by tau, right? The same thing. Like, it's like the same. Yeah. Okay, I hope you feel comfortable with that. Um, so this is, it can be phrased as a rate where the rate is one over it. And equally much so, we could phrase something 
All right, we have a stock draining by a rate, you know, rate alpha, and we're we have this stock, you know, x times alpha as the value of this. We could instead rephrase it as a stock draining with a uh, a, a time constant tau, right? Where this is what x divided by tau. And what's the relationship between tau and alpha? Okay, alpha equals one divided by tau. Or uh, if I wanted to express tau in terms of alpha, what would it be? One divided by alpha, right? Right? Yeah. So if you know the mean time someone spends in there, you can figure out what the rate of leaving it per year, chance per year of leaving. If you know the chance per year of leaving, if you know the chance per year of leaving is 0.1, how long do they spend in that stock on average? 10 years. One over that range, right? Feel free, wait. Thank you, wait. The wait is, is fulfilling an important and, and really valuable function. Um, Carter Mercury did what he posted on the uh, control site. Okay, so I hope this is relating to possible faces you see with a thought flow with a first order delay and make you realize, well, wait a minute, it's just two sides of the same thing, right? I mean, it's, it's really the same thing. It's just whether we happen to call it, you know, tau or we have to, to phrase it in terms of mean time or phrase it in terms of rate, whose value is one over the mean time. It's it's two sides of the same thing. Are we okay with that? Questions on this? Yes, yes. Yeah, so uh find this you know what happened with the stock one of the things we kind of assume that we need to do the same RU form. Yeah, which uh is not even that we need to do 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 that we and next year, the 125 of that, or like 125 AK, of that, he came out of it. Correct. So, and that not really. so if we want to sharpen this a little bit, and we're getting in this direction. So I love this question. Great question. What technically we're assuming is that a child that comes into this, well, if the same chance per year of leaving, no matter how long they've been. Turns out we're, we're assuming no matter how long they've been in that stock, they have the same chance per year of leaving. And therefore, their time in that stock is, is exponential. In other words, the, the probability that they leave or will have left after time. Uh, excuse me, will remain in that stock after a certain amount of time, call it um, uh, call it capital T, um, is given by this formula. In this formula, the probability that they remain there um, for that amount of time is going to be minus T over under tau, or um, uh, we could phrase it as minus T alpha e to the minus alpha t, where alpha is one over t. Um, their chance of leaving per unit time within the next year is independent of how long they've been there. And that chance of leaving within the next year is, is guess what? Probability per year of leaving is what? One over, one over t, one over t. Um, no matter how long they're there, they have that same chance of leaving in the next year. If they're, if they're still in that stock, if they remain there, the chance of leaving per year is that. So, so if a child is just born, um, their chance of leaving in the next year is counted here as one over 18. Right? So, so 
Yes, and, and what we're going to see, so this is a feature of stocks being what are called memory books, okay? And it's a fundamental feature of the underlying mathematics of this, that given stock with memory books, it doesn't matter how long you've been there, your chance of leaving the next little bit is the same no matter how long you've been in that stock. Okay, now, if we want to capture a situation where we don't assume that, what do we do? We split the stock into, you could have children in the first year of life, children in the second year of life, children in the third year of life, children in the fourth year of life, and split it up. And lo and behold, we're doing something like this because we have children, we're gonna have middle age, we're gonna have adults. We're not gonna just have one big stock of population, assuming people are going to, you know, that, that's gonna be the total population. If we want to capture a non-memoryless situation where people have different chances of leaving, depending on how long they've been, um, uh, they, how long ago they went, uh, they, they entered, then we need to break it up into multiple solves. Now, it turns out that the same basic mathematics will come in with state charts um, when we have a rate transition out of those fixed. But with state charts, we have more flexibility because we actually can, at an individual level, keep track of when someone came, came in. And we can meet, we could say they don't leave until exactly 18 years after the company. We can do that with a state chart very readily. We can't do it here because we assume, and then it's a fundamental thing about this type of modeling. Um, I'm not going into delay differential equations, we, we start to get into this. But with ordinary differential equations, which is the underlying math to this, it's independent. Your chance of leaving is independent of how long you may We assume that this stock is well next. We're not going to keep track of how long each person remained in it. Okay. Now, it's a longer discussion that I could have at some point. Um, there are software packages for system dynamics that allow what are called conveyors, and that do do some of this, um, but there are departure from the basic mathematics. Okay, so we have we're coming out in the middle age. Now, we, this has all been a, a, a long-winded way to re refine for us our notion of of uh, first order delays. This is a first order delay because it depends. Let me say it one more time. One more time, the refrain. This is a first order delay because the outflow depends linearly on the value of the stock. Here it's divided by mean time. In other times, we make it the value of the stock times a rate. Either one is a, is a legitimate phrasing of first order delays. And soon enough, you will see another way of phrasing the first order delay to say it looks different, but it's actually even Okay, so we have this. We put in place this formulation. How will it change the dynamics? Riddle me that. So, what are we going to see if we run these models? What's the initial value of children? Oh, dude, it just a second. What's that? What's the initial value of children? Zero. It starts empty, right? So, um, what will the initial value of the output be? Zero. Why will it be zero? Zero divided by this 18, right? Constant. So, and so initially, stock children is going to have no, it's going to have an outflow of zero. What is this input going to be? A thousand. So, will it be staying the same value? Will it be going down in value? Will it be rising value? Like rising. rising and rising by what? By what rate? A thousand people per year, right? But will it rise indefinitely at a thousand a year? Why not? What's that? At, at a thousand a year? No, just not quite At a thousand a year, will it rise indefinitely? Why not? And I'm hearing so. So. For those saying no to that, why not? Because, yeah, name? Eric. Eric. Because the uh, outflow rate with a 
that we pass to run. Because as this value is filtered on, it's the outflow will rise. And then we'll have a large or a large amount of the leaving, still a thousand coming in, but the gap between the inflow and outflow won't be a bit, right? And until what point will children rise? So Nicholas, you had a point. No, no I was just gonna ask. But you're gonna ask the question? No. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, okay, because Anthony that's in for Um so children will rise until so it'll rise, it'll keep on rising, and the larger it larger it is, the larger the value of the what? Outflow. Until what point? Inflow equals outflow. And at that point, will it rise? No, it will stay stay the same, right? Let's run. Let's 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 observe this. Maybe you could tell me what will be going on to the middle age population. What will be happening with that? Will initially what if, uh, initially will it be rising at the very start? Will it be rising? It'll be okay. It's initially zero, and its inflow initially will be what zero. So will it be rising initially? Okay. Will it stay zero forever? Okay. It'll be so. So what's going to happen with it? When will it start rising? Okay, so this will be rising because children is rising. So it's going to, this flow will be getting larger because children is getting larger. And therefore, the rate at which middle age is, 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 uh, is rising is in, in which the inflow is going is going to be larger. Oh, oh, no, don't, don't. Okay. Um, that's right. That, that's right. But it's not at the end of the year. Remember, this is continuous time. So it's actually not going to wait a year until this is becoming non-zero. It's going to do it within the first day or two, depending on the time step. It'll it already will have some children. Some of them will, bizarrely enough, be becoming young adults, like Athena sprung from Zeus's head, fully born. Okay, um, so so we can go look at this, and we'll see. Okay, so so becoming adult. This flow, its initial rate was what? Zero. And it's rising. Is it rising linearly? What does its value reflect? This flow, what does its value reflect? It depends linearly on what? on the value of the stock. So we'd expect this to, to be basically a mirror of that, right? Why is this stock rising initially? Why is it rising? The rate of inflow is greater than the rate of outflow. The number of people per year coming in is greater than the number of people per year leaving. So it's going to be rising, right? Why is it rising slower as time goes on? Yeah, the rate at which people are leaving. No, I wouldn't say more people because it's more per unit time. More, that's like saying, after the hospital was a thousand births, you have to be talking over what period of time. The rate, or the rate at which people are leaving is, is picking up. And the rate at which they're being born is fixed, right? So as Eric said earlier, the gap between these two, determines how quickly children will rise is becoming small, right? And this would be a thousand per, per year coming in and none leaving. So it was rising by a thousand a year. But as time goes on, we have more and more children in that stock and the rate of outflow is larger. And so maybe the rate of outflow, let's imagine birth for a thousand rate of outflow. Imagine that were right now it says 642, but imagine it was 500. How quickly would it be going up? If the rate of inflow is a thousand and the rate of outflow is 500, how quickly would children be going up? 500 a year. The derivative of this stock would be 500, which means it's going up by 500 a year, right? 
at the initial time, the derivative is what? The outflow is zero, the inflow is a thousand per year, so the derivative is what? A thousand. And then if this if it reached such a level, the outflow is 500 and the inflow is a thousand, the derivative of the stock would be 500, meaning it would be rising at 500 per year, and so on. And it's going to continue on until what? Speak on valiant use. In, input equals outflow. Yeah, so here we go. There we go. Inflow equals outflow. There we go. Inflow, yeah, not input. Inflow equals outflow. And it takes some time, but you see it as the night follows the day, it's pretty much maxing out. Now, I want you to tell me. Intrepid used with alacrity. Tell me, what is the equilibrium value? What is the value at which this stock will be in equilibrium, will be no longer changing, no longer going up, no longer change, going down? So, uh, Rachel. Okay, it looks about 18,000, but we can calculate this, right? How do we calculate this? Yes, Todd. Okay, I love where you're thinking, and I want to I want to make sure people can follow what you're saying. So, under what condition, under what condition would this stock be in equilibrium, be in stasis, be in a situation where it's either going up or down? If what equals what? If inflow equals outflow. What's the inflow? A thousand. And if that equals, what's the outflow? Well, yeah, but I mean, we're trying to solve under what condition, okay. under what value of children. I'm going to call children C, okay? Under what value of C, children? C divided by 18, right? Right? And Rachel said it earlier. Um, C... The, the value of C for which this is true, for which inflow equals outflow, and, and we will um, uh, can take a picture of this at some point, is what? 18 times the top. Right? If C is 18,000, C divided by 18 will be 1,000, which means inflow equals outflow, right? That's the value of the equilibrium value of that top, into, to which it goes. And you can see it illustrated on the very side, uh, right? On this very chart, this very figure. Can you see that? Where's the feedback here? Where's the feedback? There's a feedback. Here. What sort of feedback is it? Reinforcing or regulatory? Regulatory. And where is that feedback? The yeah, so it's actually applied from the very get go. Oh, there's a feedback here, applies from the get go. Where's the feedback? It involves what gossip? Uh, the the of and that's what all that needs to go the rate of outflow. The rate of outflow increases, yes, but. But yes, you got the basic idea. And the rate of the on the value of the stock. Yeah. So the feedback is through from this stock. You can trace it with this this here link. It goes from here to here and then back to the stock. So as the number of children goes up, the rate of them becoming an adult, in other words, the, the number per year becoming adults rises which drains the number of children. Is this first link positive or negative? As children goes up, does becoming an adult go up or down compared to the value it otherwise would have had all those things being equal? Positive. As the rate of becoming adult goes up, does it increase or decrease children compared to the value it otherwise would have had all those things being equal? Decrease. So is that a positive or a negative feedback loop? Negative feedback loop. It is a regulatory loop. 
it lends itself to stability. Does it not? It does. Okay. And we could we could rise that on. And, and, and if we were to disturb it, if we were to in a in a um way go and change, for example, uh we can, I should have I should have set it to be uh, yeah, I, I should have uh, set this to be set by parameter and I could have changed the value of the parameter. But if you were to disturb, if you were to change the number of children here, make it suddenly smaller. Um, if I were to change this from 18,000 or 17,999.999 children, if I were to change that to 10,000, what would happen? It would go on the same path and it would, would it go to the same equilibrium? Yeah, yeah it would. And what? Where it's in the nature of things, it seeks balance. It seeks an equilibrium where inflow equals outflow. If you were to suddenly make the value of C smaller, if you were to set it back to zero, the flows will drive it. Right? Sure as the night falls today, the flows are going to drive it. The in, if you set the value of C back to zero, what would happen? The inflow is what? A thousand per year. The outflow would be, if you set C to zero, the outflow would be yeah. now the value of the inflow is greater than the value of the outflow. So the value of C will do what? Rise, run, and it will rise and it'll come back. Okay. And it, will, and it would rise until this is the case. How about this middle aged population? What is that going to do right now? It's rising. And it's going to keep rising. Is there any limit to it here? There is not. There is not. There is not. So it will keep on rising here at infinitum until we add a seniors category, which we don't have time to add right now. But you folks would have time to add at home. Okay? So, um, stocks and flows exist in this relationship where the value of stocks, either it will drive the value of flows, the outflow becoming adult depends on the value of stock. And the value of the stock, its evolution over time depends on the value of the flows. We see here how a feedback, even though that's something you might think of as, oh, that's what we do in positive loop diagrams. This is not like that, but it's here as well. We're playing a key role. You see a key role of driving the dynamics. Do you see that? Mm. And we see the accumulation going on. We've talked about two different forms of, of first order delays. We've talked about the equilibrium value of a stock in a first order delay where inflow is outflow. We've also reflected a little bit on the dimensions and the relationships to the formulas. Hopefully, you won't forget that. You know, why that one not has to be divided by the mean duration or alternatively times the rate and where the rate is one over the mean duration, vice versa. We've seen how stocks are memoryless, and Mark is exactly correct that this model is positing that as soon as someone enters is born, they have the same chance per year of leaving, um, no matter how old they are. They that this is well mixed. We don't keep track of when they came in for a given person. If we want to do that, we could divide this up just like you've started to do for this so called aging chain into substocks and have children age zero to one, children age one to two, children age two to three, or alternatively, children zero to four, four to five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, divide them up into age pairs. And that's exactly what we do with common modeling. Um, yes, uh, Nick? Right. With any change category, you would have it, but it would be more confined, right? Um, so, so the amount of, it turns out that the more and more age categories you have, the more accurate it is. So the, the length, this is this problem of memoryless assumption is a distortion, and in the limit, if you add an infinite number of age categories, right? And each age category, uh, as you consider more and more, it, it goes to the same limit as, as if you exactly kept track of how long people uh, had been in the stock and can leave them out. 
So it turns out that that the more H categories you have, the less and less this distortion is. Okay. Okay. Now I had promised though that I talk with some of the students um, about projects, and so I think we'll break now. I want to talk with the students about projects uh, before uh, people have to go. I hope this is useful as a refresher on some things, but to build your understanding of the basics that we're going to be drawing them next week for that lecture, you, many of you have already watched, right? So if you haven't watched that, that will be really useful next week, and we'll get into the dynamics of, of infectious disease, where we have nonlinear components, okay? Thanks.